Ta-da! In an age of destruction, where life is held captive by fire and soul, courage and honor still remain in Legendary Battles. Hello Fantasy Gamers, Matthew here from Grey Army Gaming in the land of Volvo and Ava. Today we're going to play 200 points of High Elves versus 200 points of the Empire with some varied and mixed troops. Uh, we're going to be following the rules of the tournament, the Regiments of Renown tournament rules uh, that you can find online. Those are good rules and they make for excellent small battles. Today we're going to be playing a scenario that we are calling Route in the rocky regions of Rolfeld. Before we take a look at the regiments and before we take a look at the board, let's of course first take a look at the legend itself. The never-ending aspiration for expanded territory at the heart of human and elf kings has led the two great races to push beyond their lands into the rocky regions of Rolfeld. Prince Nathanaw of the High Elves and his counterpart in the Empire General Metzen have been dispatched with a small band of soldiers in order to survey the unknown region and to assess its value for enriching the coffers of their respective royal leaders. But in moving through Rolfelt, these two bands have caught sight of one another, and now they have charged out each in turn to make sole claim to the newfound region. Here is our first regiment of the High Elves, 200 points, 10 figurines. We are led here by our general, who is also our BSB. He is a noble. Um, over here we have three simple spearmen, uh, standard equipment there. We have three white lions and we have three archers, a total of 10 figurines. So if we drop below half of that, we will have to take a leadership test. There you go, 200 points of High Elves. For our second regiment now, we have the Empire. And the Empire is led by a captain who is also our BSB. Along with him, we have a great swordsman and we have a crossbowman. Uh, over here, we have three archers. Over here, we have five spearmen. And over here on the right, we have seven swordsmen for a total of 18 figurines and 200 points. As you can tell, the Empire has a a lot more guys than the High Elves, which just goes to show how much easier they are picked up and killed than the Elves. So there you go, 200 points of the Empire. Here is the four foot by four foot board we will be using today. As you can see, it is strewn with lots of big rocks and boulders and lots of different forests and woods. All of the woods will be mysterious, so we'll have to roll if any of the figurines go into those woods. Uh, but there should be plenty of cover, plenty of things to run around, to climb up on, to shoot from. Um, this looks like it will be a pretty good and exciting board. So there you go, four foot by four foot board. Let's start with deployment. Rolling to deploy now, the High Elves will be using the blue dice and the Empire the yellow. So the winner will get to pick the side on which they deploy and they will deploy their entire army. So here we go. And we'll begin with High Elves. And the High Elves will pick this side to begin deployment on. And here's the High Elf deployment, 12 inches from the center. We've got an archer over here on the side, and then we've got our BSB with our three spearmen. We've got our three lines here, and we've got a couple archers over here to try and cover the flank from any attacks over there. So mostly over here on the left side. The Empire setup is right here. We've got in the middle our BSB with our uh, great swordsman and our crossbowman with our seven spearmen behind. Over here on the other side, we've got our seven swordsmen with an archer over here off by himself against any flank attacks. Over here, we've got two more archers. So there we go, set up in that way. The board is prepared. First turn now, the Empire will roll a die. Um, and on a six, they get to decide who goes first. That was pretty amazing. Empire will go first then. Before we begin turn one, we should just go over a couple of the rules for this not one step back scenario from the Regiment's Renown Packet. Here's a couple special rules. Every man for himself means each model in this scenario is treated as an individual unit in all respects. 
They're everywhere. Each model in the scenario has a 360 degree line of sight for all purposes, including shooting and declaring charges. Treat the model's flank and rear as normal. They're counting on us. Only wounds caused in combat count towards combat resolution. Get back in the fight. There's uh, buildings are treated as impassable terrain. No buildings in this specific scenario we have here. Uh, no safe ha haven. All forests are treated as mysterious. Um, here and now, there's no things. Um, all the models begin on the table. We can't do any sort of weird things like uh, digging through the ground like some of the uh, dwarves can do. And routing. When a regiment is reduced to less than half of its starting models, it counts as being broken. At the very beginning of a regiment's player turn in which his regiment is broken, the player must take a leadership test on the highest leadership available in his regiment. For the High Elves it is 9 and for the Empire it is 8. Do not count fleeing units or units that have been destroyed when determining which leadership value to use. If the route test is failed, the game immediately ends and victory points are scored as detailed above. So basically, um, we will play until we hit a route test or until we um, run out of game turns, and then we will count out victory points. So here we go, game turn one. It is going to be the Empire to lead us off. Charges to declare, we've got none, so let's begin with doing some movement. Um, let's take this whole block of troops and march them forward. Eight inch march will bring all of them right up here and safely behind the rock for cover. And there's their final position right there. And next we will march this entire unit up eight inches as well. There's their final position. When I say unit, I mean block because each one of these is treated um, as its own unit. Each individual figurine is treated as its own unit. So this block of swordsmen will move up. Moving this archer four inches so he can still shoot this round. Moving these also four inches forward. Uh, so they are also able now to shoot this round as well. No magic, so let's move on to the shooting phase. We've got these two archers are going to take a shot off on these white lions, as is that archer going to take a shot off on the white lions. Starting with this archer over to here, uh, we will be hitting on fives at long range, so that is a miss. Over here now, we've got one of these guys shooting straight through and one through um, soft cover. So over here, they will be shooting first here um, on a hitting on a five and missing and the other guy hitting on a six. So there's a six wounding on a four. So that is no wound. end of the shooting phase and no combat. So moving on to high elf turn one charges to declare. We've got none, but we have a whole lot of remaining moves to do. Let's start over here with these archers. Starting with this guy right here in this scenario, we are treating rocks not as impassable terrain, but as something that can actually be climbed upon. So what we're going to do is actually um, move our archer here uh, five inches, his five inch move, and put him on top of the rock, hopefully giving him a good line of sight. This guy will remain put, he doesn't need to move, he's got a good shot. This archer, we will move him up five inches right here, so he'll get some shots off on the swordsman. Next thing we will do is move these three white lions up here into this area out of the charge range of them. Um, which will put them open for shooting attacks, but they have such great protection from shooting because of their lion cloak. So let's march them up a uh, total of 10 inches. There's our first one, second one, and our third one. Their final position right there behind that rock. And for our final move, we'll just bring these guys up here and put them nicely behind this rock for a little bit of cover. Still a good distance from the Empire for charge range. Start our shooting here. We got this guy shooting over here at that swordman. So hitting on fours and there is a miss. And over here having moved and long range uh, shooting actually over to this guy. No cover. We will be hitting on fives. There's a miss as well. And finally this guy over here to that archer hitting on fives and another miss. No close combat so that brings us to the end of game turn one. Let's flip over here to game turn two and begin with the Empire. Empire, movement phase, charges to declare. We will have um, this swordsman charge into the white line. White line will hold. He needs a roll of seven. This guy over here, the second guy, into him as well, and he will hold. So we will be rolling a seven for the first one, an average roll, and an eight for the second. So here we go. And a seven, he's gonna make it in for the second one and a six, so that's a failed charge, he will go ahead four inches. And so the first one moving in like so, coming in, hitting in the front, and turning to maximize there in combat. And the second guy moving his four inch failed charge move. 
Next, let's declare a charge with um, all three of these guys over here onto the BSB. Um, let's start here with the guy on the left. Obviously, the BSB will hold. So here we go. We need 10 inches on all three of them to get in here. First one, failed charge, snake eyes, one inch. Second one, failed charge of five. And the last one, failed charge of four. So we've got one, five, and three. And final positions there, one inch forward. This was, a, I rolled a six, so that five was the highest, five inch forward, and four inch forward. Remaining moves for the Empire, let's move all of these guys, uh, both of these guys four inches forward here. So there we go, four inches forward. This archer moving up four inches. Uh, we will have these guys march forward. And actually we're gonna split them up. We're gonna send these two guys over here. Um, around this side of the woods like this and hopefully into charge range soon with that guy and the other three we will send here uh, onto the other side of the woods and there's our position rolling for the woods we got a three three is a blood force but since we have no magic in this game it won't make any difference and finally let's march some of these guys up a little bit here um, bringing that guy right here and we'll just start to fill in some of the space back here um, send this guy right here and this guy over here. There we go. Empire shooting phase. Let's start here with this guy shooting on this white line. We moved, uh, so we are hitting now on a five. That's a miss. The second guy over here, same thing. Hitting on a five and wounding on a four. There is a wound and we have a three plus save for the white line. And he is fine with four. Next shooting, this guy over here, long range, and over here to this guy, he went through hard cover, uh, so we'll be hitting on a seven. That's a miss. Crossbowman here uh, moves so he's unable to fire. Only combat here, we've got the white line starting, ASF, but great weapon, so we go after initiative, higher initiative. He is going to be hitting on threes, um, and there is a miss. Coming back now and hitting on a four for the swordsman, and that is a miss as well. Combat resolution, we've got a charge on behalf of the swordsman, so the White Lion loses by one. Leadership of eight reduced to a seven, and he's good. End of Empire turn two. Let's move on to High Elf turn two. Charges to declare. Unfortunately, this combat is blocking their charge range there, so these two um, will have to do something else. Let's have both of them charge here, the left here and the right there. Both of those archers will perform a stand and shoot. Starting here, standing and shoot penalty, and now we're hitting on a five. Um, it's a miss, second one here, hitting on a five. And that is a five, wounding on a four. Um, there is a wound. Now the uh, lion has a three plus save, so he got it with a six. Rolling now for our charges. This guy on the left, 12 inches, no problem, he's in. And this guy, seven inches, no problem. And that is how those two combats look. Remaining moves, we are just going to be a little defensive here and back up uh, these guys, um, half of their movement. Um, bring them back here to make them take them out of that charge range from all of those guys. So if you see here, um, nobody now is able to put them into their charge arc, so they are pretty safe behind that rock. Shooting phase, let's start with taking a shot here off of this rock down here to the BSB. As you can see, we have a perfect line of sight right between those two trees. Okay, this is really important. If we can pick out this BSB, we are going to do some massive damage here. Uh, we are within short range, so hitting now on, uh, we're going to be hitting on threes. There's a hit, wounding on fives. No, no wounds. Next one, this guy right here will be shooting over here onto uh, one of those swords guys, the first guy there. Uh, so we will be hitting now on fours and wounding on fours, and that is a miss. And finally over here, uh, we got this guy here and we will be hitting now on threes. That is a miss. White line combat starting here now, we will be hitting on threes and because of our great weapon, wounding on twos, whoa. <laughs> he doesn't get it coming back now. Um, we will be hitting on four. And there is a hit and wounding on a four. So that does not come across as successful either. Um, we have combat resolution, uh, meaning that the white lion charged in. So he wins the combat by one. Leadership is seven and he's fine. Second combat, white lion hitting on threes. <laughs> and that is a miss. Coming back now, hitting on a four. Um, that is also a miss. Same thing, we've got a win by one because of the charge, dropping leadership down to six, and that is a four, so he will stick around. Swinging around now over to this combat. Let's continue here with the white line and the swordman. White line now will be hitting on threes, 
And wounding on twos because of a great weapon. Wow, they can't get a single break. Coming back now, hitting on fours, and that is a miss as well. Tie combat, um, so that's where that one will stay. Rather uneventful combat phase, so that will bring us over here now to game turn three, and we will be Empire, game turn three. Empire charges to declare. This guy is going to de declare a charge on him. He is in combat, so he will hold. No possibility to miss. Hits here and swings around. Uh, he was in his flank there when he charged. Next, let's run over here um, and let's have uh, this guy declare a charge on him. And we'll do a stand and shoot. on four because of the penalty, and that is a miss. Second guy here will also declare a charge, and he already used stand and shoot, so he will need to hold. It'll be difficult to miss here. Uh, seven inches, he's in no problem. Second guy, nine inches, he's in no problem. And coming in, they're both able to hit the base like that. So we will maximize two guys and come. No more charges. These guys are all safely out of all of their charging arc. Let's start here. As I mentioned, uh, we're treating all of these rocks as passable terrain like hills. So we are saying that we can climb up them actually and get over them. So let's move these guys. This guy can do a normal move, move and a march. Um, and that will bring them up on top of the rock like so. And what that will do is it will allow them now to have a downhill charge if they declare a charge onto our high elves. Archer moving up four inches to that position there. And let's start marching some of these guys up. We'll bring this guy here, uh, BSB, back here um, to provide support in the combat. And we will leave our crossbowmen there. Um, and let's start marching up these guys like so, making sure not to get in the way of the shot that will be made by the crossbowmen. So there we go, and let's just double check here to make sure we have a shot, and we do have a line of sight from the crossbowmen. And moving this guy back just a little bit, and same with this guy, and same with this guy, so that we can make sure we have a line of sight with this guy over to the Elven Archer. Shooting phase, all right, crossbowman here, shooting up onto this archer. He's got a line of sight, he is in long range, so we'll be hitting on fives, and there's a miss. Next, this archer shooting right over here to that guy. Um, we moved down we're long range, so we're hitting on sixes, and that's a miss. Combat phase, let's run over here and start with our combat between the White Lions and the archers. White line on the left, hitting on three, around the rock, uh, that's a miss. And coming back now, we are hitting on fours, and that is a one. Man, nothing is going on in these combats. Let's start the uh, next one over here. Same thing, hitting on a three, and there's a three, wounding on a two, and there is a six, no possible save because of the strength, so that guy will be killed. We will then turn like so, and reform uh, in order to go after that archer. And here we got the white lion hitting on the swordsman, hitting on a three, that is a hit, wounding on a two, and there are no possible saves because of that, so we will remove him there. Um, coming back now, we've got this one spearman who will be hitting on a four, and that is a two, so he is going to miss. Here's the combat resolution. We have a charge uh, by the Empire on the flank, uh, we have one wound, which means that lion will lose by one. Leadership reduced to a seven, and he's fine. Having lost, we want to try to reform here with a leadership test of an eight, so he can't do it uh, because his modified leadership is seven, so he can't reform. That guy will remain in his flank. At this combat here, we've got the elf starting, uh, hitting on fours, um, hitting one of those guys, wounding on a four, um, and there is a wound. We've got a five plus save and he is fine. Coming back now, two guys hitting on fours, a one and a two, so they are unsuccessful there. Um, in this combat now, let's figure it out. We've got a, uh, a charge and we've got um, a second charge um, right there. But actually, no, multiple combats means we only get one bonus, even though we charge with two units, which drops him down now, leadership to a seven. Let's see if he runs, and he's fine with a six. End of the combat phase, let's move on to High Elf, turn three. Charge to declare. First charge to declare, this guy here, and he will charge in, um, no chance to fail there. Next, this whole blo block here is going to charge up the rock face. Uh, charge here, hold, charge here, hold, charge here, hold, and charge here, hold. Uh, they are all within range, so we'll get that automatic. There is that charge and those combats now precariously perched on that rock face. 
Remaining moves, all we're going to do now is just slide this guy over here to the edge of that rock so he has an unhindered line of sight to the BSB. Shooting phase, we're going to have this guy who's in short range shoot over here at the captain. He does have a line of sight. Hitting now on threes, and there is a six, and wounding on fives. We need this, no. Second guy over here, he moved, but also in short range. Shooting over here at the captain, the BSB. Hitting on fours, and there is a hit, and wounding on fives, and there is a wound. Here we go, we got a six plus save. This is huge. No, and here's the position of our general, and he is now killed, taken out right there. Not only does the Empire lose their BSB, but now all of these guys will have to take a panic test because they're within six inches, and they do not get the benefit of their BSB to reroll. So let's roll these all out here. Starting here with this guy, um, he is going to fail. We'll leave a die next to him. Next guy here, he is going to fail. Uh, let's do this guy in the front. He is going to fail. Um, let's do this next guy right here. And a 10, he is going to fail. Next one back here. And he is fine with a four, this guy right here. And he is going to fail with an eight. Um, and last but not least, let's go over here. Um, he will fail with an eight. So what will happen is all of these guys will flee directly away from the nearest enemy. In this case, the nearest enemy is going to be over here on this uh, rock face. And what that will do is, um, let's see. Actually, no, the nearest enemy is over here, but they're all in combat. Let's actually pull back and take a look at this. Um, they're in combat and they're in combat. So the nearest, let's say the nearest non-combat enemy is going to be this guy right here. Um, so all of them will be fleeing off in this direction, which means even this guy who passed his leadership test will get fled through. He'll have to take it again. So let's see what he does. He is fine with snake eyes. So we have that one guy right there sticking around. For the sake of ease, let's just count these guys out. One, two, three, four, five, six. The guy with the die is the guy sticking around. So let's roll these out distances. One, two, three, four, five, six. First guy. It's gonna go four inches. Second guy, 10 inches. Third guy, 10 inches. Fourth guy, two inches. Let's turn that back to a one. One, two, three, four. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, fifth guy is going to go six inches. And our last guy will go six inches. So let's measure that out and see how that looks after we move them. And all the guys with the yellow dice represent uh, fleeing Empire. And another shot there. Also pointing out this archer was also fled through so he needs to take a panic test and he is fine on a five. So pretty destructive arrow there. Um, a trickle of panic tests that are failed and now we have a whole lot of the Empire fleeing. And what this means is we've still got nine Empire guys that are uh, alive and in combat and not fleeing. So we will not have to take a route test um, because we started with 18 models. So they are just right there on the line. If one of them dies, I'll take a route test next turn. Hi, Elf Close Combat. Let's start over here with the white lines. Um, two of them, let's shake them at the same time. I think this combat is over, hitting on threes. Yeah, and wounding on twos. Um, both of them wound, so that guy will be killed. And the white lines will both um, turn uh, to head back into combat and let's keep them one inch apart as is customary for regiments of renown. So there you go, successful combat. Those guys will be heading back into the fight over in the other direction. Next combat, this white lion here is going to be hitting on threes and wounding on twos. And that guy is going to be killed. Um, let's measure to see if this is six inches away. He is within six inches, so taking a leadership test, we need to roll a seven here. And that is a nine. He's going to turn and flee. How far is he going to go? Cocked. Four inches directly away from the white lion. And with that, he will pop out here on the other side of his other spearmen. Combat victory. We will reform like this to face those fleeing spearmen. This combat here now, we're going to have him uh, attack this guy, hitting on a four. And that's a miss. Now we've got two of them coming back. And higher weapon skill, so they'll be hitting on threes. And there's one hit, 
and wounding on a four, no wound there. So still a draw combat. All right, here's our main event. Let's start here and just go down the row. Starting with the Spearman now, uh, he'll be hitting on fours, and that is a four, wounding on a four, that's a six. So we got a five plus save, and he is fine. Uh, coming back now, fours, and he is missing. Um, we have a charge in combat, so we have to take a leadership now on a seven. Can we successfully? No. So this guy right here is going to turn and take off 12 inches. Um, let's try to let him go and see if we can actually reform. Um, hold back, and we do it on a five, so we will hold back and uh, reform. Let's let that guy go 12 inches. 12 inches will bring him way out there. Next combat here, High Elf hitting on four and wounding on four. And there is a six, we've got a five plus save. And no, so that guy is going to be killed. Jumping over here to the other side, this last combat, um, before we get to our standard bear, High Elf hitting on four and ASF and wounding on four. And we have a five plus save and he is fine. Coming back now, hitting on four. And so that is no good, but we have a charge, which brings um, our empire down to a six, and that is a seven. So he is going to turn around and take off a total of four. And backing inches. up just a second, I forgot that our noble was also in base contact there. So our noble gets to attack three attacks, hitting on threes, wounding on threes, and it uh, doesn't even matter for the flea, um, unless of course we can get two six plus saves which we can't, so this guy will also be killed. Now this guy, I'm um, actually held, but these three charged in, so I wanna actually do an overrun with all three and see if we can just come down this rock face and take out some more of the empire. So starting here with this guy, overrun will bring us nine inches. And nine inches will bring us off the rock face and actually hit this guy, which means we're charging a fleeing enemy, uh, which means he is cut down right where he is. Next, uh, we will overrun with um, our BSB and see where he goes. BSB going nine inches, so he is also going to do the same. Come down here, hit this guy, take him out. And finally, um, finally, let's do this guy um, and see if he can actually go off and get that guy in the woods. Overrunning five inches. No, that will just bring him down here. Uh, so there we go. And of course, the free reform here, once these guys are out of position, um, doesn't matter anyway. Regiments of Renown, they have 360 movement, so we'll just turn them around like so. An incredible round of combat for the High Elves. We've only got three Empire who are not fleeing. Let's come over here and turn our turn dice to game turn four. And we need to take a leadership test for the Empire. Road test for the Empire, leadership of seven. And boxcars, how appropriate, an appropriate way to end the game. So, because we rolled a 12, that means that the Empire has now routed because they have over 50% of their models that are fleeing or dead, um, which means the rest of them take off off the board and the High Elves win this game. So at the end of game turn three, the start of game turn four, the High Elves, successfully route their enemies and come away with a victory. Congratulations, High Elves. There you have it folks, an exciting regiments of renown battle between the High Elves and the Empire. It was going back and forth, I wasn't quite sure where it was going to go, but then we got that lucky shot off on the BSB, which created a massive rout for the Empire, which they were never able to come back from. It's always a little dangerous and always a little tricky bunching your guys up together like that, uh, when you're playing regiments of renown, but you know, I thought it was a good thing to do because um, the BSB is so close by to everybody that they all get to re-roll panic, uh, to failed panic tests, but in this case, because it was the BSB who got taken out, um, there was no possibility to re-roll, so all of those troops took off, giving the High Elves a pretty decisive victory in the end. Well, it was fun to play this scenario. It was cool to do it on the rocky field uh, with all the different terrain features. Take a look at the scenario online at grayarmygaming.com and send me an email at matthew at grayarmygaming.com with some pictures and some feedback. Let me know if you do this, how it goes. Um, if you make any changes, variations, I would love to hear from you.
Thank you for joining us once again here today at Great Army Gaming, where great can always play.